you need to realize that job families at risk is the wrong category for assessing human talent in the AI era. We talk about it all the time. Chad GPT 4.0 came out with that image update thing this week. My, my DMs are full of graphic designers and UX designers worried about their jobs. Even agencies are worried. Fine. What we're missing is that AI, as it advances, is leaving really obvious cracks. Like if you look at AI as this advancing uh, wall of intelligence, which sounds really scary, right? What you're seeing is that it's not really a wall. It's actually like full of canyons and cracks and areas where it's not getting better. And the more certain parts of AI improve, the more obvious it gets where those gaps are. Let me lay out a few that I think are incredibly obvious as human opportunities, and they're not getting better. One is figuring out how to do competitive assessments, how to do fuzzy logic tasks around competition, sales, go to market, distribution as a whole. That is not being close to solved with AI. I, I don't just mean that AI can't sit down for dinner and close a deal. That's certainly true, and people have said that before. But I also mean that AI is really bad at the gut level intuition that comes with good distribution and good distribution strategies. And not a lot is getting put into that. Another example, AI is really, really bad at complex interaction design. If you ask it to think in terms of a complex interactive system, things that you do with a complex app, it's not good at it. Like when I talk about 4.0 and designers being worried in my DMs, I look at what it actually produces. and It's a very simplistic app. It's like an app with a single button. And if your app has a single button, you're probably not going to last anyway. You're not going to make it you need complex interaction design. And that's something that by definition, AI can struggle with because it tends to think in terms of next token prediction and systems design thinking is inferred through things like reasoning models. You can get to completeness of text through things like O1 Pro, but interaction design is not text. It's also not code. It is a third thing. And it is not something that the models have great training data on, and they're not necessarily getting better at it. Here's another one. Technical solution architecture is something that enterprises used to have, and it was worth doing because enterprises could invest in an entire software engineering team to carry out the architecture once it was put through by someone who was very senior and understood the systems, blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Now everyone can make software. Everyone has a team of like kind of dumb intern engineers in their pocket. We have no dumb solution architect equivalent. Uh, it's not there because you can't have a dumb solution architect by definition. And another category of DMs that I get all the time is what do I do to design this app now that I've built a splashy looking front page and lovable or in bolt or whatever it might be? I have a non-functioning homepage. Isn't that impressive? Well, they know it's not and they want it to be better, but they didn't go to school for database architecture and they're not going to. And so there's this enormous opportunity opening up for figuring out how you bridge that gap. Now, if you're going to scale that out to the millions of people who now want to build small apps, there will be some productization there. I don't, I, I, I have no illusions, but there is also increasingly a human component to this because you're not just thinking in terms of what is the technical system for the idea you brought to me. You have to use human fuzzy logic and figure out what is your inferred intent long term. And then what is the right tool selection? And then within that tool selection, what is the right sequence of steps overall to prompt the tool with to help it help it build? These are things that we don't really have names for, but they're highly important roles. Here's another one. Chat GPT 
now needs to be something that marketers measure and understand when they look at brand profile and they look at mentions and all of that. Nobody knows how to do that. Nobody knows how to game that and like get more chat GPT mentions. That's something that, yeah, maybe there's some science there. Maybe Stripe launching LLMs.txt is going to help their visibility in future chat GPT updates. But at the end of the day, it becomes a human problem to figure out how to optimize the web across multiple interfaces. The web is being disintermediated. It used to be human and computer. And now it's human computer, it's human chatbot, and it's human agent, which may choose a computer or choose a chatbot. And for marketers trying to solve that problem, like that's a whole new class of problem to solve for reaching people. Ads traditionally don't work. Like, does your ad work on an agent? Have you tested it? That's a human problem. And so I'm not just saying we are thinking about the wrong thing when we think about job families disappearing because I'm an optimist and I'm not saying it because we shouldn't actually spend some time thinking about it. All I'm saying is the pendulum has swung so far over on the gloom and despair side that we are ignoring these really interesting niches that are coming and that are becoming more obvious as intelligence is scaling. Like one of the things I look at is where is the direction of these intelligences going? Where is AI evolving faster? AI is evolving on medical and science innovation really fast. AI is evolving on code production really fast. AI is evolving on complex text production for nonfiction purposes really fast. AI is evolving on reasoning across the web really fast. But there's a lot of other categories where it's not really moving much at all. And so we need to think about what that looks like. We need to think about areas where we are not seeing those investments and what it means from a job family perspective to refocus and rethink what jobs are meaningful in the AI era. Because Claude can be great at code production, but if you don't have that human basically able to say, this is where the code should, should be written, this is the language it should be in, this is how it should talk to the database, this is why, this is how that maps to the inferred intent of the app designer. You're not gonna get very far with Claude. And, and that is the baseline experience of so many people who set out hopefully to build apps with these tools. And I know there are smart people at lovable.dev and at bold.new trying to figure this out, at Replit trying to figure this out, great. But the challenge is you have to field an entire range of human building utterances with this and infer from that in systems thinking, reliable architectures that are secure and one shot apps. That is a very hard challenge. And I'm not saying it's impossible, but I'm saying that it leaves a lot of room for smart humans who can help with technical allocation challenges. So, we have technical allocation challenges, we have marketing challenges, arguably product challenges. We have engineering system design challenges. We have uh, sales distribution challenges. There are things in most of these job families that remain very unsolved and that AI is not getting better at. So think about that and have some hope. Even though like a new thing comes along and Sam Altman does a lol, we killed your startup slide. Think about where job families are going and look at how you can upskill to in that direction. Cheers.